Lexus finally has what it's needed for a long time, a three-row crossover, the TX. It's got three different powertrains. I think this is going to be a very popular vehicle. Do you cart around your kid's sports team on a regular basis, shop at Costco weekly to feed them? In the past, if you wanted a three-row Lexus to do that, it was body on frame. And no, the stretched RXL doesn't count. Toyota's luxury division finally has a triple-row unibody crossover that's less expensive than the flagship LX600, the all-new TX, the longest Lexus made. So TX is really important for our brand for several reasons, one of which is the fact that this is the first ever Lexus that is purpose-built for North America. I'm at the press launch in Austin, Texas. Uh, let's get that obvious gag out of the way. And while this might suggest the Lone Star State, it's manufactured in Indiana. For those paying attention, the Toyota Grand Highlander, built in the same factory, shares a similar size and family mover mission. The TX rides on the same GAK platform as the Toyota Grand Highlander. That's just smart product planning. All automakers do it. This has additional spot welds and adhesives in the chassis. The steering rack and the back end are beefed up, so the entire structure is stronger and more Lexus-like. There are three models. Pricing? A front drive TX350 starts at around $55,000. All wheel drive adds just $1,600. Highly recommended, it adds a more secure feel. Move to the 500H F Sport Performance and prices rise significantly, beginning at some sixty-nine dollars and chances are buyers will add option packages. There's no word on the 550H Plus plug-in hybrid pricing just yet. It won't start shipping until the first quarter of 2024, but expect an upcharge in the neighborhood of $10,000 over the standard 500H. As for competitors, it could be any larger Luxo unibody three-row. It's a little blurry. Audi Q7, Acura MDX, BMW X7, Cadillac XT6, Mercedes GLS, or Volvo XC90. Maybe the more capable Land Rover Defender 110. But TX is not intended for intense off-roading, like LX600. Ground clearance is just under 8 inches. It seats either 6 or 7. Only the 350 is available with a three-passenger bench in the middle. Lexus engineers are realistic about the back. There are belts for just two here. Let's cover the three powertrains. TX350 is the volume model. Lexus figures it'll make up 80% of sales. It's motivated by a 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, making 275 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. That's coupled to an eight-speed gearbox with manual control. It can be had with front or all-wheel drive that has a shaft running to the back. TX500H is strictly an F-Sport performance model with direct four all-wheel drive, meaning the back tires are electrically driven, no drive shaft to the rear. Plus, it alone gets rear-wheel steering and adaptive dampers. The parallel hybrid system's electric motors and 2.4-liter turbo four make a total of 366 horsepower and 409 pound-feet of torque. The transmission is a six-speed in this case. And there's the 550H Plus, a plug-in hybrid with an estimated all-electric range of 33 miles. The gas side is a 3.5-liter V6, and the total output is 404 horsepower. Lexus is coy with the torque figures. Direct 4 all-wheel drive is standard. Here, the transmission is an electronic continuously variable unit with a very natural feel while driving. All TX models can tug up to 5,000 pounds, compared to the LX that pulls 8,000. Go with the base turbocharged four-cylinder in the 350, and you're looking at a 0 to 60 sprint of about 8 seconds, and it's fine. This is the 500H, and it is significantly quicker. This will spool up to 60 miles an hour in about six seconds. So yeah, definitely more satisfying. 
550H Plus is a few tenths of a second faster to that benchmark. Its additional horsepower has 400 extra pounds to handle. I drove all three powertrains. The 350 will be perfectly fine for families that roam the burbs and take long trips. The front drive model that I drove has just a hint of torque steer. You'd have to be looking for it. I recommend all wheel drive since under hard acceleration from a stop while turning, the front tires skitter just a bit like front drivers often do. The 550H Plus is the heaviest at late for soccer practice velocities. The extra heft gives it the most understeer of the three on twisty roads. Still, it's controlled and very predictable for a big machine. With active noise cancellation, all of them are quiet and all of them deliver on the brand's promise of a premium ride quality. I prefer the dynamic of this 500H F Sport. Lexus talks about its Lexus driving signature, which is essentially a controlled dynamic, but still very comfortable. I mean, this is what you should expect from the brand. Um, it is comfortable and it's never sloppy. And I have to say, I really do believe that the F Sport model has a little bit of an edge over the other two that I've driven. The one-two punch of the F-Sport's unique adaptive dampers and trick rear setup make a difference when you drive all these models back to back. All right, let's check out the rear wheel steering. See how tight it is. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. Terrific for urban maneuvers. I like this. And it definitely feels tighter than the other two models that I've driven. Visibility is quite good. The seating position is high, exactly what the masses want these days. Hit large potholes and yeah, there's a little body quiver. The structure does feel more buttoned down than sister Grand Highlander. Let's talk fuel economy. All TXs prefer premium fuel. The regular 350, which is the turbocharged four, should return an EPA average of 23 miles per gallon this 500h hybrid 27 so it's not prius like efficiency but it is more powerful and it is more fun to drive and it is more efficient the 550h plus is estimated at 29 miles per gallon average when running on gas only but with 33 miles of all electric range it can be far more efficient than other tx's as long as it's plugged in TX gets a solid suite of standard ADAS features like adaptive cruise, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, and a confident lane keeping assist. Good stuff. It's marketed as Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0. A mouthful. And then also seen on RX and RZ, we've got our traffic jam assist, which is also packaged with lane change assist and front cross traffic alert. That'll be available on this model as well. Available. That's code for optional. Here's the cabin of the base 350. All TX interiors seem to be designed to take a fair amount of abuse from growing families. Materials have a sturdy appearance. This is synthetic leather or Nulux. 500H F Sport models get a slightly different look. Leather seats in birch colorway brighten up what can be a dark space. Consider the lighter hue or optional panoramic sunroof to brighten things up. It can feel dusky inside. The 550H Plus plug-in hybrid here gets an upgraded ambiance with standard semi-aniline leather. Touch points are soft and comfy. Ambient lighting is an option. To get out of a modern Lexus, push the electric door release. If there's a power failure, it can be pulled as a mechanical latch. So we've actually got modular cup holders. So these can be popped out of the front center console and placed in the second center console if you have the captain's chair set up or within the third row. These are very large. We know our North American customers love their large beverages. We've tested this out with our Stanley cups and our large McDonald's cups, as well as smaller coffee type cups. The center console is actually kind of a unique execution for TX. So you can um, independently open it right and left. And the cushioning as well as the material carries around the side so that even when the uh, center console is in an open position, it can still operate as an armrest. The standard entertainment screen is a large 14-incher, and it runs the new Lexus interface, which really doesn't have much of a home screen. 
There are a couple rotary dials, but largely controls are on the touch surface. It's really designed to be connected to a data plan that enables natural voice commands. Using the wake phrase, Hey Lexus, is there any good barbecue nearby? I found 15 results. The first is Ironworks Barbecue at Red River Street. Would you like to go to that one? I don't have time. Folks in Austin will have to tell me if that's a good one. Wireless phone charging is standard. Every seat in the TX has a USB port. Most folks will use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Both are wireless. Options include a digital mirror, good for when cargo is stacked to the roof, a bird's eye camera system, phone as key tech, and automated parking. This pad controls the optional head-up display that's large and informative, but that selector is right where my palm rests while driving, and the result can be kind of distracting. I like the 21-speaker Mark Levinson system, but I didn't have my usual files to test the sound quality. Using Spotify, it didn't have the punch that I would expect. Lexus Marketing talks about every seat in the TX being the best one in the house. Arguably, the second row has the advantage. The mid-row does mid-row things. There can be an enormous amount of legroom if there's no one in the way back, but be considerate, right? And these chairs can be heated and vented, just like the fronts. It depends on the trim level, of course. Separate climates? Of course, that's standard. Lots of charging options. The center console is removable if that's something you want to ditch. Even without it, there are enough storage cubbies to organize stuff. So the easiest way to access the third row is going to be by touching this button that's up here at the shoulder area of the second row seat. And that is actually going to slide forward as well as tilt forward for us so that we have a very clean and easy path into that third row. There's also several kind of tactile touch points on this vehicle that were very thoughtfully engineered for accessing the third row. There's a grab handle for pulling yourself in. There's also a really flat space that you can kind of push yourself out with. And then something as simple as a seatbelt latch to make sure that that seatbelt is pulled back and out of the kind of footpath for our guests and passengers. Small kids that can't reach the quick release button up top can just do this. With ground clearance at just under 8 inches, it's not much of a hike up and in or go between the two captain's chairs. Room in the way back is about the same as a Grand Highlander. That shouldn't come as any surprise. Comfort depends on how generous those in the second row are. I've got this seat about midway, and this is decent. Uh, foot room is fine for a three-row crossover, and the floor is nice and flat. Cushions are low just like any three-row crossover, so knees are up high. Um, there are lots of features back here. Cup holders, a little slot there for your iPad, and lots of USB ports. Overall, this is about as good as you're going to get in a three-row crossover. Um, for more room, you would go with a van, but Lexus doesn't sell those in the United States. Maybe go with a top-trim Sienna. 350 is available in three grade levels, 500H and 2. The Plus only comes as the top tier premium. Overall, this is a conservative shape. Unlike the sporty looking NX and RX, TX has an upright form follows function design that Lexus calls practical elegance. Now, comparing sister Grand Highlander to TX, it looks quite different, though the doors look pretty much the same. There's no Lexus logo on the rump. It's all spelled out these days. The D-pillar is unique and blackened out. Up front, the traditional spindle grille is toned down. So this is what we are calling our unified spindle. And it's not just meant to be an aesthetic look to the vehicle that it's adding. It's actually adding some significant aerodynamic properties, helping us lower that coefficient of drag. We have a new 2D logo that's actually mounted on the front of the hood here. So this is a little bit of a departure from the full 3D kind of bulbous logo that you see on some of our other Lexus models. Because we've removed that bulbous logo in the front, we've repackaged the millimeter wave radar, which enables our uh, safety systems here. This and the narrow headlights give TX a dirty, hairy Darth Vader if they made it appearance. Uh, not in any way possible, but I digress. F-Sport gets smoked chrome trim, unique 22-inch wheels, and of course, badges. I never have time to do the TP trunk test at events. Some um, I asked the hotel for a supply, and they just looked at me funny. 
as they should. There's some 20 cubic feet behind row three. Lexus says that's good for seven carry-on suitcases. I'll argue six if they're among the larger ones that you can take aboard. Storage under here is minimal. All but the plug-in TX get a temporary spare tire. Some bag hooks back here would be nice. Being a large rig, optional powered seat backs are good to have, not so much for lowering, but for bringing them back up, especially for smaller folks. Uh, they're not particularly quick. Those controls are duplicated at the back door, how Lexus-like. Drop row three and cargo room rises to 57.4 cubic feet, and I'll note that this space is far more usable than what's found in Toyota Sequoia and Lexus LX. Those are body-on-frame platforms. Not carrying passengers? Space grows to 97 cubes, making this the Texas of Lexus cargo space. TX makes good use of its interior. With limited time in the TX, here's red light, green light. Green lights. Finally, a three row crossover from Lexus. No need for the faithful to go with an LX. It's more car-like driving dynamic is perfect for the experience Lexus tries to deliver to its customers. It's quiet and roomy, especially in the six seat captain's chair configuration. It can be bought as a more basic piece of premium transportation or option to full on Lexus opulence. Yellow lights. Interior materials are high quality. The dark colorway of the instrument panel and door carts can feel somber. Row three is roomier than most, but it's still not going to be as comfortable as the first two. The rear steering assist is brilliant. Too bad it's only on the 500 HF Sport. Red lights. While this is a Lexus, the vibe of the durable interior is a step down from its more sumptuous offerings. Going with the 500H hybrid doesn't raise fuel efficiency to lofty heights. And for full user interface functionality, a data plan is required after the three-year trial expires. For similar usability, there's always Grand Highlander at a lower price. If your kids are gonna tear up the cabin, maybe that's the way to go. But the TX does offer a premium experience and every harried parrot can appreciate that while schlepping the brew here there and everywhere. Overall, this is exactly what the Lexus customer wants. Three roomy rows, decent efficiency, and good, comfortable driving dynamics. Lexus believes this is going to be a runaway hit, probably its best-selling vehicle after the RX and the NX. Lexus estimates it'll move 50,000 copies in the first year. That might be conservative. The TX offers the room and comfort of mainstream three-row crossovers, while the badge telegraphs success to the neighbors. It should be a Texas-sized hit. One last thought about row three. My drive partner, Victoria Scott, sat in the way back for a solid 10 miles. And at six foot one inches, she said headroom was just fine, though the cushion a bit firm. Of course, knee and leg room depends on where row two is set. But you're spending a lot of money. So get back there and test it yourself. Hope you got something out of my look at the all new Lexus TX. A couple things before I go. Full disclosure, Lexus brought me down to Austin on its nickel, put me up in a nice hotel, fed me good food. That's pretty standard in the automotive business. I just want you to know that the opinions are mine because I think you deserve the truth. And second of all, there is going to be a lot of chatter about this being as big as Texas. But let's not forget that the largest U.S. state is Alaska. Yep, there's your geography lesson. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications. If you want to support my channel, please do. There's YouTube Super Thanks and Venmo. My name, Tom Volk, is spelled a little funny, so I'm easy to find. And if you have a question, find me on social media or just leave it in the comments, okay? All right. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.